open ya I think we are. I think we are live right now. Good morning, dear one, to everyone. Hope all is well. Okay, Divya, Latwaja. I hope everything is well. I see you in the background. Uh, you got a couple things moving back there, but I hope everyone is well. Good morning and welcome to Chiism Live. I'm Namdi Osimri. I'm going to be filling in for uh, Otwaja and also for all of the DBS. They'll be joining us a little bit later. Um, we have a good show. We have a good show. Uh, we have a couple things, some some technical difficulties that we're dealing with right now, but we'll make sure that we get everything situated. Uh, we're going to have our, our co-host hopping in in a minute, but basically just wanted to say once again, good morning. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little bit of a uh, had a little frog in my throat. Had to get some some fluids in me. Um, but uh, it's going to be a very interesting show. And today's show is going to be catered more towards the youth, just like it was last uh, the at the end of the last last month. Um, now, once again, I apologize. Have some technical difficulties going on, so we're making sure we're getting everything situated. But in the meantime, I hope every single person's day is going swimmingly. I hope your week was great. I hope your weekend was amazing. Um, mine was mine was excellent. Mine was great, and I hope this day continues to be just as great as everyone else's. So, pardon us. While we uh we we get everything situated, still making sure we getting some things in order. Uh, just waiting on a couple other guests. Um, but let me see what we have going on because the topic of conversation is a good one. Just waiting. Oh, okay. There we go. So, brother, how are you? I'm good. There will, there will. Glad to be here. What's going on, brother? How are you? Very good. Very good. Hope you're doing good. Awesome. Now these are the other co-hosts. Um, you guys, go ahead and introduce yourselves for the people that don't know you. Mm -hmm. All right. If y'all don't know me already, my name is Emeka Anyoha, aka Akimi Bro, interactive designer, content creator, tech guy behind the scenes. Glad to be here. Welcome. Good morning. Buddy, 
don't think we can hear you. Can't hear you, brother. I'm mute yourself. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, just a little audio issues. Yeah. You got us? Yeah. Still can't hear you. Don't worry about it. Hey, maybe computer need to wake up or something. That's probably what it is. Like, yeah, I don't right. know if I'm ready for this morning. <laughs> right, right. I'm now, saying. Maybe. It's okay. You know what's crazy? Technology has been going bananas as of right now. For like the last month and a half, it's been crazy. I've been losing, let alone my cell phone, I've been losing calls, text messages, emails. Uh, I, I haven't been getting responses for almost anything and then all of a sudden i got a, a a wave of emails i came through out of nowhere i'm like what is going on so expect expect technology to act the fool every now and then hopefully it doesn't last but we're gonna make sure that we uh you know we get it in so yeah, it'd be like that yeah, it really does it's okay though it's okay expect it i always say expect these things to happen at least once or twice a month in your life. <laughs> all right, all right, good people. Okay, there me? we go. There nah, we go. How are there you, bro? All right. Had to go a little old school with the, you know, the throwback, you know, headphones. Got you. Hey, go ahead, introduce yourself, man. Welcome, everybody, to the show. My name is Magnus Kraku, a.k.a. Buddy. <laughs> I go by Buddy to all my family members and People on the show coming in today, we are family, so call me buddy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man, well, we're glad to have you on the show. Glad to have both of you on the show. Uh, and you guys are like brothers to me, honestly. Uh, some some intellectual young minds on this, this panel. Now, funny thing is, I'm trying to pull up the topics, and it's not pulling up. Well, like, hey, technology, like you said, you're going to have once or twice. It's just going to Once or twice. It's wild, man. It's wild. Do you have, I know that we sent the uh, topics to you. Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. It just just run through uh, that topic for us. And then um, if you could shoot shoot one of the questions out and, uh, you know, let's get the, let's get things started. Okay. Okay. So, of course, as if y'all see by the title, young people may face various spiritual challenges in today's world. It's kind of crazy. Um, we're going to go over the six reasons. Usually that involves peer pressure, you, um, identity and purpose, uh, secularism or materialism, uh, technology and distractions, possibility of uh, the lack of community, of course, um, and the moral ethnical dilemmas. So one of the things was I think the let's just start with the top two. Um, so the identity. What are some? What is the from identity and purpose? What is the spiritual challenges that they may face based off of that? And we can just branch off of that for our thoughts and stuff like that. Um, I guess I'll start. For me, um, it's kind of like like many young people. We typically struggle with questions with identity and purpose, may even question our beliefs, values, and, and stuff like that. Because like we live in a world now um, where we, I guess, like, like it kind of goes back to what we were talking about almost like before about Gen Z and millennials. We kind of in that time where we're more open-minded, so we tend to not be stagnant traditionally. So it's kind of like opening our eyes for the first time. And there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with being curious at all. And it just, you know, there just needs to be more support of us. So I feel like the struggle with that and also being the black sheep of the family, because sometimes people are, they have their own beliefs, but their family believes in this. And 
and the younger people or the sons and the daughters are like, eh, you know, I understand, but I have my own set. So that's my take on identity and purpose. That's a good take. And I can see where, you know, it could cause some confusion, especially in a you know, family or draw those family lines uh, because you were raised in literally what that family fabric holds together as religion, you know, and uh, whatever path you choose to follow, you know, early on, later on in life, as you become a free thinking adult, you kind of look and may challenge, you know, those or those um, uh, uh, family thoughts may challenge what you now know or, or believe in. So, you know, it's, it's kind of kind of hard. Uh, but as that is life, you know, you're trying to find yourself and your purpose. Uh, and sometimes it may be at the um, expense of, you know, uh, disconnecting yourself from from family in terms of what family uh, uh, um, believes in, you know, family beliefs. So it, it's all it all comes down to the one, you know, moral aspect of respect. Right. Like, as you said, you know, respect between everyone's viewpoints you know my viewpoint doesn't have to be the same uh, as others so it's it's and it also is incumbent upon parents and i think this is kind of where it gets kind of tricky you know uh, the more liberal parents get the more understanding or open-minded i get yeah i guess that they get too and that is good for society because that is, that enables their child to grow up and let them think for themselves, right? But here's the tricky part. It's hard to implement when that is for their child. So you can't put an age to it. So some kids, some parents might start way, maybe, maybe way too early and have that child think for themselves. But it's like you, you can't because they're still a child, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, and that child's able to to you know, express um, something that might not, something that they might grow up wondering, dang, why did I do that when I was 10 or 11 years old, right? And they might neglect, they might start to uh, neglect that, that, uh, that thought in the end of you know in the process of life so it's 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 kind of it's kind of a double-edged sword and i think it all all it has to do with is moderation right and giving giving your child an open voice and allowing that child to grow and 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 catering catering to how they see the world and within that that way you can kind of police in a good way hmm no, that, that makes a lot of sense. That does make a lot of sense. I think just to add to that, or maybe a different perspective. I think one of the reasons why a lot of the youth have um, issues or struggles with their identity is because of what they're seeing in society. Right. Um, most of the time we've been, we're middle school, high school, college, and we're just talking about not even necessarily on a spiritual level. Those are when you enter a specific realm where there is continuous um, classification. And also, you know, you're put in a box, you're put in a bubble. But on a spiritual or religious tip, it does start at a very young age because you're being taught to look at something most of the time outside of yourself or something that doesn't necessarily look like you, right? As being something on a higher, at a higher order. So on a spiritual level, if you're taught this as a kid and then you come into your own, especially in, you know, 2023, 24, the new age, you know, people in the 2000s, you're you're going to compare yourself to a lot of other people outside of your community exactly. and most of the time on a spiritual level when you're thinking about how you identify yourself just in a social environment let alone a spiritual environment you're going to question 
everything about yourself, everything, right? Um, I think that's one of the one of the main issues that especially individuals like us, uh, melanated people in the melanated community, in the African community, the African American community. I've heard this so many times. Uh, in I heard this when I was in middle school. I heard this when I was in high school. Uh, just the fact that I, I have a I have an African name, right? Um, and I say it with pride. If I say my African name with pride, I have African Americans that begin to make jokes or ask questions. And sometimes when they see that uh, how I conduct myself is me, there's there's no question about where I come from. There's no question about who I am. There's no yeah. question about my beliefs because I grew up in a family that uh, upheld that aspect of culture. And you have individuals in the African-American community that are clamoring for that because they don't necessarily know where they come from or they question everything that has to deal with just on a social level, let alone a spiritual level. So the youth now is is questioning that at, at such a high level, it's it's almost scary. That's some of the reasons why they push away from uh push away from not only from religion, but they push away from society in general. You know, and, and that's the thing, you know, uh, I think I don't want to say parents, but the older the older, you know, part of the generation, they don't give credit to how smart and capable children really are. Exactly. You know, children children will answer will ask a my rate of questions. You know, and it's it's like it seems just like it, it it'll, it'll just come in clusters and, and you know and whatnot in waves, and oftentimes they ask so many questions is because the reason they ask so many questions is because they are trying to really find the question that they want to ask. That is the reason children ask so many questions. Because they are trying to find that exact question to ask. And when they finally get to that exact question, it's like the parent, they can't answer it. And I think sometimes, you know, parents run from that, run from that, uh, um, uh, that uh, responsibility, you know, and it, it is, it's a kind of like a double-edged sword because you don't want to, you know, uh, kids are very knowledgeable and they're very smart. They can do things with that knowledge. So, you just have to be kind of careful, I guess, how you uh, parent your child. Mm -hmm. uh, I might want to, I might want to really speak on that. I ain't got no kids, <laughs> right, right. but, uh, <laughs> but mm -hmm. just, just, just look, kind of looking at, you know, you know, society in my perspective or whatnot. Uh, I yeah. can see, I can see how that would, you know, cause some issues. Absolutely. But I do, I do understand what you're you really coming from too, definitely. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah. Um, so. I was able to pull up the pull up the topics and the questions now. So that was one that I uh, the next one I think is actually pretty interesting. And this can kind of feed off of of um, the idea of how parents move, how how parents move, how kids move. But I think it can still it, it's still intertwined. So peer pressure, peer pressure, peer pressure can significantly impact a young person's spiritual journey. So it says they may feel pressured to conform to societal norms or engage in behaviors that conflict with their spiritual beliefs. So what what are you before I run with that? Let's let's go to Emeka. Emeka, what are your thoughts on that as far as when it comes down to peer pressure? Like how do you how do you feel about that? Well, that that is one of the main reasons for sure i think that's because of fear because fear plays a big role for sure um rather that's religious or not or even just being in a toxic environment of judgment because like as i mentioned before there's so many expressions to um go by when when trying to find yourself especially since we live in a more liberal world like i said less traditional as i mentioned before um it's just one of those things where specifically i th in this world things run off of in terms of p 
people because you know the more people it, how about this it's like a majority thing like a majority rule thing right so if majority of the people believe in a certain thing more than likely that's going to override the 40 percent, regardless if that's that's um how they feel within themselves so what i mean what i mean by that is that let's just say like i said i'll, I'll just piggyback off of the example of what i mentioned before like you're the black sheep of the family let's just say it's um they believe i can be really funny with it i can even say i don't know let's just say they believe one plus one is three but you believe it's two but three people believe that compared to you more than likely even if it's it's not of you you're gonna end up submitting to it because it's the majority so i feel like and that's the peer pressure about it because that's really dangerous that's not even about spiritually either that's that's even like you know when you hang with the wrong crowd for example so like even if let's just say you don't want to do any gang activity that your quote-unquote friends was a part of but majority of them like oh no no you saw if you did did, did, did." i mean that's just one of the examples so that plays a major role in human society because if it's the majority over you you're more than likely going to crumble unless you're just one of the one of the last ones standing Mm. that's how my perspective is on it Mm. so so here's an interesting thing you 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 were speaking facts right there here's the interesting thing let's take it back to the parents real quick and let's just say your parents are in control of where you go to school. Your parents are in control of where you go to church. Your parents are in control of sometimes who, what friends you, 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 you play with. But if we're talking about on a spiritual level, if we're talking about the level of influence that the youth, uh, the level of influence that the youth experiences as far as the direction that they go. Between the ages of birth and seven years old, um, the parents usually have major control of where, what you do in general, right? Um, And the Jesuits said, give me the child and by seven, I will show you the man. Mm. So it's, there's a level of influence and then there's a level of there's a level of influence and then there's a level of peer pressure as par, as far as after a specific amount of time right because from that age of birth to 7 we are subconsciously and uh, unconsciously just watching what our parents do who our leaders uh, are or, or who we consider the leaders who we consider the gods so to speak in our in our close knit environment in our small environment so if our parents are taking us to let's say taking us to church because a lot of kids the only reason why they're going to church is because their parents are taking them to church right so that level of influence from a from a uh, a older peer group <clears throat> is usually leading the kids into a specific environment to be taught a specific thing After the age of seven, after those habits have been developed of either going to church or recognizing where your parents are taking you or individuals in a in a uh, in a higher peer group are leading you, then you're going to find yourself in a place where you can start to make the decisions that you want to make. Right. And like you mentioned, school, high school, uh, 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 your friends, all this other type of stuff. Society is going to start playing a major role as to the direction that you move. Right. Now, if certain habits are being developed between the ages of birth and seven years old, then you begin to start making conscious decisions after that. The question is, are you doing this off of habits of of habits that you've learned through that year of subconscious development? Or are you just going to switch to a place where it's all about survival? And spiritual survival. Because if you go to high school, when you go to middle school and you go to high school, the decisions that you make, it it becomes more spiritual than anything because now you're conscious about the things that you're doing, especially when it comes, let's say, let's say bullying, for example, right? I've seen, I'm not even seeing on TV shows or anything like that. We're not even talking about TV shows. I know you guys have seen this too. You'll be walking down the hallway of your high school and you will see some kids getting bullied 
like crazy, right? Do you say something? Do you intervene? Do you just walk past? It's none of my business. I don't want to say nothing. It ain't it ain't me being bullied. What does how does that weigh on your moral on your moral thought process? How does that weigh on your spiritual thought process? Because depending on who your older peers, your parents, the community that they engrossed you in, they brought you in, the church, the the your uncles, your aunts, their friends, like who were who was involved in who was involved in your life around that time that developed your sense of moral compass, right? And also your, your spiritual belonging. Because that right there is going to influence how you move from then on, from conscious decisions. Are you being pushed to ignore things that are against what you believe being right? Or are you going to move with the pack because that's what the pack says? Right. Don't get involved. It's not my business. Are you going to intervene because your spirit says this is not right? This isn't what I was taught to believe. Yeah, this isn't how I was taught to move. You feel me? So I always wondered how how do we move? How do we how do we move based off of our conscious and some conscious thoughts after a specific amount of time? And and I, I'm gonna give that to you, buddy. Like, what what are your thoughts, man? It's a point you made earlier that's that's coming up with me now. Remember you and you said uh, from the time of birth to seven years old, your child will will um, you know come to see you'll you'll see the chi- the man in your child, right? Mm. And let's take that same seven year old. Fast forward, you know, seven years. They're in high school now, and they're walking down the hall. What you ingrain in that child at that seven-year-old stage, stand up for others, you know, uh, um, always do the right thing, this, that, so-and-so. That is what's going to make that decision when that child is walking down the hall and seeing other kids get bullied. They're not going to sit around and just watch it happen. You know, if they came from that type of family uh, environment of, you know, uh, family first, um, you know, uh, look out for everybody, you know, treat everybody as equal, so and so. They're going to try to do something, at least say something, intervene, right, while they're walking past. And the same goes for society. So it's like you already, you can already tell what that, uh, how that child, will will uh will act in society based on what they do in school and how they interact with others and i just wanted to bring that point up because it was uh it was profound what you were saying oh yeah yeah absolutely because that's <sighs> there, we, we there's uh there's a lot of work that the youth has to uh develop and then there's also some behaviors that the youth have to to really break away from. That's kind of uh, it's instilled, right? Especially through society. Society does a, an excellent job of either giving you the things, giving you the tools to uh, to develop, or presenting elements of aggression. That's right. the way I live. So, especially on a spiritual tip. That's something that the youth really have to move. Uh, move. Now we're gonna go through the uh, go to the third topic. I think Akin you. Bro had something to say about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to add, bro? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was just I was just adding to I was just adding to your points. Like so, now it's kind of there's like a pros and cons to it. Like of course now, well peer pressure. When we hear peer pressures, typically more on a negative tip more because it's pure mm-hmm. you know you're pressuring that person but you know of course i'm sure you heard the quote it takes a village to make a child so i want to say there's a pressure but if let's just say that child is more open-minded more i'm not gonna say more nice but 
I would say more kind, more caring, more than likely their spiritual growth is going to be more less shaky. But if it's let's just say there's another child that is being taught to to only think this way and then oppress people based off of that or or just be a little bit closed minded, their spiritual growth is going to neg negatively impact them and then it's going to lead them to be more frustrated. So kind of going back to the majority thing, I think I think if if parents like you mentioned, I'm not delay if the parents um, and to not just in any generation and uh, future generations, if if we can make sure we don't. If we don't teach them the wrong things, then it won't affect the spiritual growth. So that's what I will add to that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think the question becomes, what do they consider to be the right or the wrong things? Right. That's no such thing. You know, said what? I said there is no such thing. You know, life life is about growth. It's about mm -hmm. finding out what's you know what to do and what not to do. So the only way you can do that is if is if you put one or the other in you know motion. Because at this in the same uh, in the same notion, somebody who is very caring will be very very drained at the end of the day. Think about mm -hmm. that. You know, you have to have some type of selfishness, some level of selfishness in you to take care of yourself. And before you can take care of anybody, you got to take care of yourself. So, you know, it, it's 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 you have to learn. That's what life is about, is learning the curves and where to draw the line. And the only way you can do that is by pushing, pushing that envelope until you find, OK, Maybe that's that's not where I should go because of a event that happened, right? This this is the barrier. So you found that barrier on what you know what is too kind, and then you found that barrier maybe that made you feel a little low. It's like yeah, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't do that. I'll be more kind in this area. So mm -hmm. that, that's just my perspective on it. Yeah, no, I feel you. Oh, and uh, Ameka, it's um, it takes a village to raise a child. I don't know if a visit a whole village makes a child. I got questions. If a whole village is gonna make a child, I really have questions. Who's the mother? <laughs> um <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> that's a question it, for another there's time. Just, there's just so many right. questions. I don't know if this uh this show is the right one for it. Anyway, we're gonna go <laughs> on to the next <laughs> We're going to go to the next topic. <laughs> so secularism and materialism. And I think even that, what we were just talking about not too long, what we were just talking about, what we just came, the topic we just came off, I think can still be played into that as well. But secularism and materialism in a predominantly secular and materialistic society, young people may find it challenging to maintain a spiritual connection. This is actually really deep. The focus on material possessions and instant gratification can hinder their ability to explore and deepen their spiritual beliefs. Mm. Say it again. One more time for people in the back. One, one, one more time for the people in the back. OK, let's 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 do it again. Secularism and materialism in a predominantly secular and materialistic society. Young people may find it challenging to maintain a spiritual connection. The focus on material possessions and instant gratification can hinder their ability to explore and deeper deepen their spiritual beliefs. Oh snap, we have another guest on. Okay, and it is Akachi. She is uh uh the the the, the queen of this whole thing. We just can't always be the fellas. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we, have to we can't. Be, we got. We got three kings. We got to throw a queen on. Perfect. How you doing? I hope you. Could. I want you to Hello. take. I want you to take this topic. Oh wow. Um. I okay. Um. You kind of got me there for a minute because I'm still actually kind of stuck on the identity part. Mm. And one of the thoughts that i had i was actually i was typing actually before i was able to join so I'm, I'm grateful i'm able to be with you three kings right um and dropping some great wisdom some young 
jewels that are absolutely nuggets of wisdom. You know, I think even with, um, I guess I'll say in conjunction with what we're talking about, which is the materialism and secularism, I think of first identity is like the core of all of this, because even when we talk about the term spirituality or religion, we those were kind of words that were created in terms of a Euros, uh, Eurasian categorization of people because there is like the Hawaiian people, Hawaii. They don't have a religion, they're a people. There's no Hawaiian religion, but because of the Westernization, we say it's a religion or that's their spirituality, but that was just their way of life. There is no um, concept of a technically an Igbo religion, right? It was just the people's way of life and how they understood the world and how they navigated the questions that that humanity has always asked why are we here you know what is the creator you know what is our purpose and so i think coming back around to uh materialism and secularism i think that the culture is basically confronting this this western idea of value being outside of self and, and possessions Whereas indigenous people, which is, this is like traditional to most people around the world, pre-colonization, pre-Arabization, pre-Eurasian colonization, they didn't see their, their highest possessions being outside of themselves or even tangible. It was actually their, their, their wealth was more in the values and the community and the relationships and the trust and the wholeness of people rather than a thing. So I think, you know, even when we when we're looking at it, that's that's what really stood out to me. And it was difficult for me to understand for a while because I was Christianized is how we use the term African spirituality or African religion. But really, we're just talking about nations and, and groups of people that that was just their way. And so I think what we're confronting with the secularism is someone else's way and how does that impact us mm. okay then and anyone else can take this so that was good that was a, a really good point now let's let's just say in today's society in today's society not just here in the states but also back in the continent western society has done a very good job of implementing thought processes and access to resources or lack of, of access to resources, depending on where you are. People in our generation and younger have now found that in order to survive, the dependency on access to those resources and the lack of access to those resources does play a major, major influence on their spiritual development and and their 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 way of thinking, right? If I don't have this, I can't take care of my family, especially for those youth that may grow up in a single a single family household. So, how do we ignore the need? I mean, and maybe this is me playing devil. Maybe this sounds like I'm playing devil's advocate, but I think this is something that needs to be needs to be addressed, especially for us melanated individuals here in the states and also back in uh um back in back in the dias outside the diaspora back on the continent whatever what are we to do when it comes down to regaining a sense of spiritual identity spiritual awakening and also spiritual let's just say uh spiritual materialism without ignoring the need for those materials or those resources in order for surviving in the 21st century well my take on this would be well i think that starts with leadership um well spirit, spiritual journey is really an individual and of course you know it's like a type thing but what i mean by that is like let's just say there is certain 
countries that are less fortunate than other countries they're more than likely they're not going to be happy and for and for the soul that's kind of that's kind of damaging so i feel like if people have the necessities that they need then they can focus more and be more happy and be more jolly it's like you know it it makes sense you're going to be more productive and stuff like that so i feel like it starts with that that's a good point. I think you're right. And uh, in essence, you know, uh, when you look at um, a lot of uh, societies and traditions, uh, I know in in um, the I think it's uh, I don't want to get this wrong, but I think it's in Chinese culture. Uh, they they preach less is more. I think it's Taoism. I think I'm not sure, but uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But um, less is more. It's kind of it's very profound, profound, you know. Because if you think about it, the less material objects that you have, the less problems you have. Now, if you look at the latter of that, the more money you have, what the more problems you have. So less really is more because you don't have to worry and when you don't have to worry you can save time energy less stress on things that do matter to you you're not worrying about you know oh am i paying for for this the three you know car notes and the insurance that goes with it so and so nope you wait you're you got your your hoopty that you are paying insurance for and it's gonna you know take you it's gonna take you uh uh miles and miles and miles without having to worry about a car note so in that sense yeah i can see what you're saying wow you know what you made me think of um is how like there's this documentary like i'm i'm a bit of a minimalist at heart and I thought it was odd, but it's actually very indigenous, like to who we are as a people. And it made all the sense in the world. And this one documentary on Netflix, it was um, they they did like a just this whole this whole minimalism um, of their homes and, and their lifestyles. And they realized upon the study that the average person in America in the United States. They have over 300,000 items. And I know that almost sounds unbelievable, but if you think about every single small, big, minuscule, not just your furniture, but everything in all those drawers, every drawer in your house, every single thing, and how that creates anxiety and stress for us. And like what you were talking about, the more money, the more problems. And I think about like from the economic standpoint, how um, culture, which is really what it was, like whether you were Fijian, Igbo, Yoruba, whatever part of the world you were, it was your culture that organized your economy. And now we're under this society, like you said, where you have to quote unquote pay to eat, to, eat, to live. And it wasn't that we didn't have a, an economy, an ecosystem that worked for us, but you didn't monetize water. <laughs> you didn't monet you didn't commodify proper language. You did not commodify water, things that we need to live. And so I think that how we address it is we as us leaders on this platform, I think we have to be the ones who reshape what economies look like because as long as you don't someone owns your water someone owns the very aspects of human survival that were innate that were institutional that most people knew how to do they knew how to cook for themselves and not just cook but get the food grow the food until you empower our societies and redesign them we can evolve we can still have you know, our own Wakanda. But until that happens, I think people will seek the prosperity gospels because that's the way this this Western world has been organized. And, and every nation now that's following it, including India, you know, we look at them as some kind of model or China, but 
they're not <laughs> they're destroying their own uh ecosystems and there is no one ecosystem because we're all on this one planet so mm-hmm. it's impacting all of us absolutely i think um <clears throat> I think one of the main one of the main things we actually oh let's see someone uh oh Okuna, I think it's Okuna Chow. Yes. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, we are in the era where people now see every rich young man as successful, uh young, not minding the source. Mm-hmm. Young people now involve themselves into all kinds of stuff just to meet up, meet that mm-hmm. standard. Uh, I think it cut off right there, but he does have a point. Young people now involve themselves in all kinds of things and all types of things in order to meet a certain standard of societal's view or society society's idea of success. Look, for me, I, I can't be ignorant to the direction. We can't be ignorant to the direction that society is moving. It is becoming so much more uh uh materialistic driven materialistically driven there's the 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 concept of even recognizing um spiritual gain at the same same level of material gain that there's literally no comparison people will literally push aside their spiritual development to make sure that their money is right Mm -hmm. I always thought, okay, in what way can we, in a way, use that concept to our advantage in order to flip that around, right? Because you have to you have to work with the direction that society is moving. Most of the time, we're going to find ourselves on the outskirts, just focusing on spiritual development without knowing that. The world operates off of the dollar, the yen, the, the the pound, the this, the that. It is very important, especially for us as melanated individuals. But just remove just the the us as African people, or us as 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 indigenous people, or whatever you want to classify. Every single person, black, white, brown, throw another color spectrum in there. It is important for our spiritual development to be recognized. But we have to know how do we how do we turn the tables by using the tools that we have, right? So most of the time, as you mentioned, uh, Akachi, it's up to us as young leaders. It's very important. Now, uh, Chiism actually stated materialism can distract uh, can distract individuals from exploring and connecting with their inner selves. Absolutely. Spiritual growth often involves introspection, self-reflection, and the pursuit of wisdom and enlightenment. So. And I want to, I'm sorry, I want to make a quick point to that. Materialism mm-hmm. can distract individuals from exploring, connecting with their inner self and this, you know, spiritual growth. You notice when you go outside and you're driving out the end of your neighborhood, say if you leave, you, leave, you live deep in the neighborhood. There are no bicycles at one person's house. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nobody, no, no, no child, uh, uh, you know, children don't necessarily, uh, uh, um, they don't co-mingle with each other outside of, you know, these, these big places like malls and, um, um, uh, you know, just places where they are always surrounded with by, by, you know, technology. And mm. you know, so and this is always with yeah, them. Like, this phone, this? <laughs> that's this this thing never leaves them. So yeah. you know, there there is no way for spiritual growth or not, you know, and, and to for them, for them to be around nature. Because for you to go spiritually, you have to be outside. Mm-hmm. That is what gave birth to you, Mother Earth. And going out to a park for twenty minutes can do a lot for your spiritual health. Just by just just by hearing what's around you, because you know people who live in I'm not going to take too long. I know you had a point to get to. I'm, uh, people who live in you know uh, uh, these big suburban areas like New York, it's, it's like a concrete jungle. That's literally what they say. It's a concrete jungle. There is nothing but concrete around you, skyscrapers, and you know the whole nine. 
Hey, you walk, you walk by not seeing a patch of grass, and you wonder why people are so frustrated and cussing each other out on the street all the time. That's mm-hmm. the reason why. It's because they're not they're not surrounded by what gave birth to them. Mm-hmm. What gave birth to you will 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 literally give you happiness. Everybody has a has a mom, and everybody loves their mom. At some point, you know they they might you know break off whether that's you know later in life or earlier in life depending on you know a, a my rate of factors but when that when that mom gives birth to you and, and cares for you as a child you, you, that child never lets go of that of that uh that being never so i think it's the same way with nature we have to become more in tune with nature in order to become more in tune with ourselves mm. yeah i'm not gonna go ahead brother no, I was just saying that part. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And, and that was one of the points that I wanted to get to. Uh, and Okuna Charles actually makes a good point. He says, quest for materialism can affect one's spirituality because at the point, the individual can do anything to be popular. Moderation is the solution. Absolutely. And that was a point. As a matter of fact, buddy, you made a good point as far as when it came down to getting back to nature. Having an understanding that moderation or balance is the key to pretty much everything. You you can't learning how to farm. I feel is probably one of the one of the best techniques you will you will ever learn. Why? Because number one, you're learning how to be one with the earth, right? You're learning how to be one with nature. You're learning how to utilize the skills that our forefathers had as far as survival, tilling to the land, taking care of your community, giving back to the earth, but then also accruing the skills to teach others to teach others. And if we're going to utilize that skill as something that could potentially put some money in your pocket, that's another skill that can be taught. That is that is one of the skills that is essential or just one skill that is essential to balance. And unfortunately, we have so many of the youth that have been brainwashed or have been convinced because we we can't we can't just say that uh, uh, the youth is coming up with all of this themselves. They're following a trend that is being pushed upon them to move more away from nature and from spirituality. Right. Spiritual identification, you're absolutely right, comes from recognizing where you come from. So if you just go outside 15, 20 minutes, just stand there, ground yourself, put your feet in the dirt. There's going to be more of a connection with the earth and more of a connection with where you came from than staying on your cell phone, sitting on the couch and just scrolling on IG. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is, you can get a lot of information on even what I just described. I've seen people teaching and telling people Go outside, put your feet in the dirt, ground yourself on Instagram. Now, the question is, how many people are going to do that? The information is there. But most of us are so convinced that everything else that will allow us to get more. A bigger couch, a better phone to access that information. You see where I'm going with this. So we have access to that information. We just have to find better ways of showing people that there is balance and then acting upon that, right? That should at least help lead us to a specific direction as far as creating the balance of materialism and spirituality. Go ahead. You just brought up something um, about the grounding that I had a personal experience. So once when I was, you know, feeling down, it was a lot going on. I was frustrated and I was sharing this with an elder and she said literally come on over and garden with me you know and it wasn't that the door was closed for me to express or talk about what i was you know feeling but it was just like come on over and garden with me and i can tell you and that, and I, that's when i really knew it because I'm, I'm an outdoors person anyway but that like i don't know how long we spent at least probably a couple hours outside in the dirt hands in the soil Hands, not gloves, right? Not what they try to sell you. You got to put on gloves to touch to touch dirt. <laughs> no, like hands in the soil. It was like 
so healing. And if in a sense, and I, I wouldn't even say distracting, but kind of reminded me or recentered me, perhaps on a subconscious level to what was important rather than what was ruminating in my mind and in my spirit at the time before I was in the garden. And so I know the earth can be healing to us. And I really like the point about how do we, people are going with the trend, but how do we make people, um, I don't want to use the word make because I'm pretty free spirited, but how do you influence people to go with a trend? And I think it, it's as cliche as it is, but it's something that always stuck with me. I actually learned this at a church revival um, camp for the youth, but you know, show them the clean glass of water and and show them the dirty glass, you know, let them know that it's polluted. And I think when people have the choice, they will naturally choose the clean water. And I think that's what we have to do in terms of showing them that the trend, the phone is distracting you from like connection. And I think that's part of the materialism, the material, like we're, we're so disconnected, like even though I'm grateful we're on the, we're we're connected right now through technology, which is a blessing. And we've contributed to that technology. Make note. We help make this possible, our minds. But imagine how we all been together in the same room. That's irreplaceable. Like us vibing off of one uh, one another, us feeling and seeing, like just that's something completely different. And I think that's what people are missing. And because they don't know and can't figure out exactly what it is. And even when they do know, because they made sure that this was addicting, they gravitate towards more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, instead of it's us. Every time when I'm around us, it's like, it's us. Like we never want to leave us. Every social event, every, you supposed to have been gone. You said, oh, I'm leaving an hour ago, two hours ago. <laughs> but it's us that's really what enriches us, not all the things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I will say in conjunction to what you just said, the last part, uh, when we were younger, I wanted to I, I wanted my parents to like. Um, like I was hungry. If if my parents were just sitting there talking to their friends all the time, it was going to be another hour uh, <laughs> that was happening. Look, uh, Akachi. I appreciate you when you said, you know, everybody is sitting there communicating, but I was hungry. I wanted to go get some food. My parents would just be sitting there talking to their friends. This is a whole different conversation. Look, <laughs> let's go to the next one. You were supposed to go in the kitchen and fix something to eat. No, Cause we, cause if, we no, no, because if we go to someone else's house, unless they had food there, I got you. We're not going to argue about this. I was hungry. I wanted to go home. Uh, now, here's something that you did mention that did it, it actually goes into the next topic, and we're talking about technology and distractions. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a good thing. Uh, well, I don't want to say here's a good thing. Let me let me go through it a little bit. So it says uh, the persuasive or per pervasive use of technology and constant exposure. So social media can create a distraction from spiritual pursuits. Absolutely. It can be difficult for young people to find time for introspection and reflection amidst the constant noise and stimulation. There's, there's everything stated in that is absolutely true. One thing you did mention is the, the gift of technology. We are in four different, complete, completely different places, mm -hmm. right? The four of us may be a few miles, a few hundred miles from each other, but we still have the ability to connect. Now, our viewers that are watching are from across the pond, back on the homeland, up on the coast. So the beauty of it, it of technology, it allows us to stay connected at the same time, but from all around the world. The problem that technology has created, I'm not gonna say the problem that technology is, the problem that technology has created 
is it has now become the epicenter for just absolute nonsense permeating the, the, the amount of access that we have to the nonsense and how that permeates the, the, the world in general. It, it becomes such an influential tool to individuals that don't have our best interests at heart and leads us to spiritual distraction. Like we were talking about, if you can go on Instagram and someone is telling you about grounding, that is that is beautiful information to get in. Some people had absolutely no clue about that. But if you scroll down and you're seeing a whole bunch of other nonsense that will lead you to doing the complete opposite and keeping you sitting in sitting on that couch, just continuously scrolling, then is the information that we have access to and the information that we're being given, is it more beneficial for us to have access to that technology in that moment? Or is it more detrimental because there's an abundance of nonsense there is, then there is an abundance of actual and applicable information. What are your thoughts? I was going right ahead to say I was doing the same thing just yesterday at 1030. 1030, I'm looking at my phone on Instagram scrolling. I'm just like looking at shorts and reels laughing. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll get up in a few more minutes to, you know, uh, do what I have to do. 11.30. I look at the time. It's 11.30 now. I spend an hour scrolling on Instagram. I, I don't even remember. I, I If I had to, if I, if I knew what I, uh, about what I saw or the most of what I saw, it's because I saved it. But, but if I didn't save it, I, I wouldn't remember it at all. So, you know, to this day, and I'm sitting right here talking to y'all right now. You know, but I but I remember a, 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 a an event or a time outside when I was playing uh, baseball or catch with my with my dad. So, you know, it's 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 funny that how technology has has really or people have people have used technology to control us because that's all it really is is control, you know, and mm -hmm. and uh, whatnot. But uh, I want to go back to uh, Akimi bro. Uh, about the onset of this question about social media, because I, I think that he had some things to say there. There's a bunch of ways I can go about this, I'll be honest. Um, well, I'll start with personal experiences, kind of like what you had. Well, I'm sure how can I, start? I can start back in 2020 because I experienced this multiple experience of how there's a very extreme side to technology. So I'm a district. So really, right, for me, especially with the pandemic, everybody in the house, what else are you going to do? Go outside? No, nah, stop. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, nah, but although at the same time, I that was when I was really, really consistent. Like I used to heavily meditate. I used to Go in nature because you know you don't really go to school or nothing, so you're kind of in the house, and not only you're bored, but you also want to be in tune in this crazy world. So, fast forward to around I'll say December 2020, around now, mind you, this this was kind of like my day. I'll wake up, I'll and this is like the like well, the summertime and to December, I'll wake up, go on the phone. Because, you know, I think the worst thing you can do in the morning is just immediately look at your phone. I mean, you can look at the time. I'm not going to act like you can't do that. But you know what I mean? You scroll. And then after that, the, it's like literally how you wake up is how your day is going to be. So anyway, I'll do that. Now play a bunch of video games. Do that multiple times. At this time, I wasn't really eating the best either. All that. It didn't just sleep. And then do all that and sleep. And do all that and sleep. But then... I ended up having to go to the hospital one time because uh turns out that can screw you up, M not just mentally, but physically. And I had and, and that changed scared my life. Crap out of your family members too. I was scared to yeah. death that day. I was like, yo, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, it was right? terrible. But to this day, even though that was bad, I'm kind of, I'm really glad. It was an eye opener. It just was like, whoa, what this is what can happen. So. So for a personal experience, it's, it's too much. There's like two things I say. There's good food and there's bad food, right? 
the bad food is more like i won't say it's entertainment per se because entertainment can be good like if you had a down day and you just want to laugh cool but if it goes off the deep end it turns into bad food but the but people need to apply more to good food, which is like you said, Namdi, about the grounding. Apply that more, you know, because technology definitely can be a blessing and a curse. But but then also the bad thing is that people have short term like attention spans because there's so many things going on at once. They can't focus. That's why people have a lack of focus. And that happened to me, too, because even recently I noticed the like, of course, I over I tend to overthink a lot. And of course, you know, you have an overstimulated mind, but it was really bad. I think this was like a few weeks ago. But like it was to a point where, because you know, I'm a con I'm a content creator. I also do, you know, I also school. And then on top of that, all my downtime, I'll probably just be chilling. And I don't give myself time to kind of just sit down, just meditate. I'm not saying you have to do these the whole time, but just just sit down, do breathing techniques, something. But I kept doing that and repeat in my brain. I literally couldn't think I was having like migraines. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways I could go with that. But just 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 give you even if it's five, 10 minutes, just to sit there. Give yourself your brain. It's like a computer. If if it over stimulates, it'll, it'll eventually just crash and mm -hmm. you don't want to crash out. So that's and the reason I want to I want to say I, I called him out is because if for people that don't know, this is that's my stepbrother. And um uh, you know we're we're in the same dwelling place and it was it, it was so profound to how he was able to turn it around that it actually changed me too and i started to meditate and become become more of like you know open with nature i, I was just in the park yesterday with a book reading uh, uh descartes uh meditations on philosophy sitting under a tree I'm, for like about about an hour you know and I, I thank him for, for it because every every now and then it would think it was 2022. I'd see this young man outside just standing on the front porch or the back porch, looking up at the uh, trees and the sun, meditating. How many people, how many of us do that? Instead of looking down all day, we don't get to look at the blessing that is above. Or in front of us. Or in front of us. Right in front of us. Literally. Absolutely. Like, you know, uh, go ahead. yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no. You, I was going to call you out Are anyway. You go ahead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, so many things you said in Mecca, it made me think about, I'm not sure how old Magnus you are. Um, I uh, imagine we uh, could be closer in age. You don't have to say if you don't, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to put you out there. I'm an but, old man. I'm 31. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. I'm, never mind. Anyway, that's that's fine. Um, for us 35 or 30 and over, um, I think there's like this line of demarcation. Like we were, we, we actually lived and remembered life pre this. Like, and we were old enough to remember it. Not where we were maybe 12 and we had a phone in our hand or maybe, you know, even younger. And I think that be, I'm grateful that I did have that experience because I think it really helped me see when I was getting, I was going in a place where I couldn't focus. And for me, it was reading. I couldn't sit down and just read. And it, it bothered me terribly. Like that's when I knew I was like, okay, something is wrong. And I already felt that something was wrong. This was some years ago, but I couldn't sit for 30 minutes and look at a, and read a book without having this urge to like, go check, go check, go check. And I had the Zanga, the meet black people or not meet black people. What was it? It was a, it was some uh, black meetup or something. It was before, you know, MySpace, just all of that. The Facebook before it was Facebook, you know, just all of that. And I just thought of how, you know, I remember the shift and plug, go check out OMSI, African Women Mobilization Commission's workshop. Um, they're still available on the YouTube page, but I did uh, participate in one of those workshops where I talked about media and my role in media, and we go even deeper. But I just realized how it was it was disconnecting, and I think one of the key components is that if this was our technology under our control, under our inception, which was rooted in our culture, 
I think that we would be using technology differently and we wouldn't have this um, conflict with it because we've made things for the sake of being in harmony with nature and us and life sustaining practices rather than something that was a death style or death sustaining or illness, disease, disease uh, practices. So I think that's part of what we're combating with the technology is not it's not necessarily the technology itself. It's why it was created, who's controlling the creation and the, the direction of that innovation and what it's used for compared to what we would have created it for. And I, I, I just really don't think if this was if we were like when, when D.B. Udi always talks about how we had um, we always hear about the interruption. Of, of African people, but we didn't have the opportunity to continue to naturally evolve. I think we would have been evolving back to this. I, I don't think that this technology is necessarily even new, but that's just a theory. I think we, we I think we had this and beyond in the past. And I think we would have used it for something that was even more magnificent than what we think it is even right now. No, it's, you're absolutely right. One of the things about technology, one of the, 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 the positive things about technology, and uh, some of the members of Cheerism Live actually mentioned this, uh, they said that technology is good because it allows, especially on a spiritual tip, it allows individuals from across the world, from around the world, to connect with spiritual leaders and individuals that they may not, that have information that they may not have had access to before. The problem with technology or or how technology has been been branded or being uh, uh, is being used is is being used as a distraction to move individuals away from levels of spiritual connection. Now, technology, like I mentioned before, and how everyone else has also mentioned based off of their their personal experiences utilizing technology and how it it is, uh, we, we had to come back to the place of understanding that balance is key. So if I can go on to, uh, if I can go online and, or I can go on to a, a, a WebEx or I can go on to Chiism Live and I can gain spiritual, uh, um, gain knowledge on spiritual identification, on uh, my roots, my, uh, my spiritual roots and, and things of that nature, but then I take a break after I get that information and I go read a book that may have been mentioned on that live or in that podcast or on that, you know, uh, whatever. I go read a book and like uh, like Buddy said, go in nature for 30 minutes, an hour, go read that book. Then the balance has been made. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can go back online if i'm having a bad day like a kimi bro has said if i'm having a bad day i can turn turn that on and laugh my behind off because i was having a bad day but then i turn it off and i go do something creative because now that's inspiring the 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 god in me the creator in me now let's also be very very clear spirituality or the essence of spirituality is not relegated to one ethnic group or one group of people in general. Energy is not created nor destroyed. It is simply transferred from one thing to the next. So because we live in a, a spiritual world and a world that is encompassed by energy that we can all be a part of, we all exhibit, we all put that energy out and we all take that energy in. We can learn something from everyone. We can learn something from everything. I think it's beneficial for us to acknowledge that we have those ener energetic and spiritual connections within our own people. But then we do not ignore the ability to connect with the spiritual, the spirituality and the energies, the positive energies of those individuals around the world because they have given us some things that do benefit us just like we've given a lot that have benefited a lot of other individuals. I think it's the positive aspects that when we focus on that, 
just like with technology. If we focus on the positive aspects of technology, then we learn how to balance the connections between us in our own communities and then those outside of our communities. And we recognize, okay, we can benefit from these individuals just like they can benefit from us. And we can benefit from us just like other individuals benefit from themselves, right? And I think that's what's important. Funny thing is that actually leads to one of the next topics lack of community. Young people may struggle to find like-minded individuals or communities that support their spiritual journey. This can lead to feelings of isolation and hinder their ability to grow spiritually. Now, this is something that is plaguing the youth today and it's getting pretty dangerous, right? Um, the inability due to that 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 disconnect is it's it's disturbing because i think if we go back to peer pressure if we go back to identity those play a major role into how individuals actually build communities or even find themselves as being part of communities and that can be detrimental on a spiritual level because if i can't connect with someone if I can't connect with someone, then that's going to mean that I don't feel that there is a connection with something higher than me, because I'm going to start questioning whether I actually mean anything to anyone else. Therefore, why would something that's higher than me? Why would Chineke? Why would God, whatever name you want to put on a higher spiritual being? What 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 are they looking? What are they looking at in me if I don't see anything in me and no one else sees anything in me? How can I connect with individuals within my community if I can't even see, uh, uh, if I don't see them as being able to connect with me? Like, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? And anyone can take it. Well, you know, what's what's interesting is that for me, I agree, definitely agree. There is a lack in community, but I have a little different spin to it. So, like, I feel like there there are certain communities that a lot of young people like to attach themselves to but that doesn't mean it's per se good for them so like what i mean by that is like i'm trying to think other than religious and cultural but i would say like for example when it comes to let's just say um let's just say african people for example right so for us, religiously, let's just say, right? There's a bunch of communities, spiritual communities, and additional stuff like that that you know young people attach to and aspire to, and you know grow from there. But then there's that one. It's like, like I mentioned earlier, like the black sheep, right? That group. It's like if you're not a part of a major, a major or majority, like I mentioned before, uh, like type of organization or whatnot you're kind of just lost. You're just floating somewhere. And then now there's some small communities that try to branch them, but I feel like that's at a, at a disadvantage considering the fact that, like I said, we, I feel like we live in a world majority, although it shouldn't really matter, but that's like how my spin is to it. And this is like, I hope there's more talks like this i think this is like one of the solutions like we come together right now like this i feel like there should be more and then there'll be a rise of spirituality within themselves and just helping each other that's all we do because i feel like the world there's like this worldwide propaganda of destroying each other when we should love each other there shouldn't be no greed and none of that love is the highest vibration as ahani kaya kaya said so that's my spin on it that's a great point mm you know, uh, trying to find the spirituality within each other. You can't do that without speaking to one another. And, you know, I think the the problem with, you know, that, you know, before the onset of, I'm not going to say technology, but I would say widespread, easily, easily able to grasp technology, like, you know, your cell phone. People were always walking about and looking at each other talking right you always had to make eye contact because you were never looking down at a phone mm -hmm. so 
wherever you went in the street, it didn't matter if you even knew that person. The 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 the, the, uh, the chances of speaking to someone wow. were a lot higher in the seventies and eighties, right? On this on the street than it is now because you know now it's like avoidance. You you really out there to avoid people. You know the reason you pull out your phone if you see somebody you know, right? Uh, not necessarily any of you guys, but just using this as an example. Uh, this is actually uh, something that happens in pop culture a lot. Uh, you know, they watch a uh, TV show, it'll, it'll happen. Somebody sees somebody from high school, you know, that they know, and it's like they don't want to make contact with them. So what do they do? They pull out their phone and act like they're on the phone talking to somebody. Where in, you know, in, before, it was a much, it was handled much differently. Like, yeah, you didn't like that person, but you still spoke to them. And I think that's lost now. So it's like, you know, everyone's hiding behind behind the veil of technology without having to deal with a human connection, a human interaction. Now, if you don't deal with something that you don't like, but it's still a part of you, how are you supposed to say, or how can you claim to be 100% in touch with yourself if you do not like getting in touch with all you know parts of uh of yourself even if it's it's not really something that you like to do you see what i'm saying because we all got to do things that we don't like to do but it's necessary right mm -hmm. so i think that's just that's just my take on um what technology has done in a negative way for the things that people don't like really like doing because we still have to we still have to confront certain things but technology i guess okay this is how i say it. technology has made it easier for us to run it away, run away from our problems mm -hmm. wow. um you spoke on something that i i had thought about earlier in the week and it was people not speaking and what i noticed is i've noticed it before but it really struck me because this was an older gentleman like you said 70s and probably before and i think about the tradition of, of african people speaking because the reason we tend to take such offense to it is because you're you're acknowledging my ex existence like you're acknowledging chinake and me and I and you. And so when you ignore someone, it's like you're ignoring Chinake, you're ignoring creation. Right. And um, I was troubled because this was an older man. I think he was definitely old enough to be my father. And his energy and just like he didn't see me, that whole idea of not being seen. And I was just like, wow, like, you're supposed to know brother <laughs> like what's you know what's what's that about and you know when i think about commune i looked up the word I'm, I, I love to look up words and their defined meaning in this in this language that we're speaking uh being english and uh the etymology of words and one of the second definitions it says is to communicate intimately commune commune and I thought about that with community and how I think that community is first starting with self. Like, do you communicate with yourself? And I um, recently had a loss. My, my grandfather passed and just other things going on with my, my blessed little Nala, um, which is, she's, she's my dog. And um, I just had a lot of things on my mind in general. And I just, when I came back, uh, from out of town from the from the funeral services and everything i just didn't i didn't turn on anything i didn't want to hear anything and i love music i love music okay <laughs> like i love music but i just had silence and it was amazing because i could hear myself it wasn't the um you know <laughs> meditating like meditating is throughout life and i think that we had those meditating moments of just living when we didn't have constant radio, music, television, phones, just 
all of that. Like just, you took a walk, like you said, bicycles, like you walk. So when you walked, you didn't have a device. You had the sounds of birds or the rustling of branches. Like you heard the wind or rather you heard the wind's effect on nature. <laughs> you know, like you had that time to meditate, just living life. And it was very refreshing because I was actually able to hear my own thoughts. And I wasn't in complete silence for the whole day or days at a time, but I literally just took moments of just, we're not gonna turn anything on. Not even, I love jazz, I love classical music. I love all kinds of music from all over the world, but it was just like, we're not even gonna listen to anything without lyrics. We're just not gonna hear anything. And it did so much for me because I was having communion or commun community with myself. And one of the things that, you know, um, I'm a member um, of UIU, Umo Ibo Unite, our Houston chapter. And while I'm not on the board this time around, I'm on committees. And so like for the icebreakers that we have when we have our general body meetings, which I had kind of initiated or I did, I initiated when I was on the board is communion. Because what I realized a lot of times is that people were feeling safe looking at this. It was kind of like, ah, uh, you know, I, I don't want the discomfort of, yeah, I'm not really vibing with you. And I'm not sure why that is, but instead of me living in that moment and maybe we might actually have to communicate and see like, what is this? Like why we're not gelling? And then we could actually find out we actually have more in common, which what you spoke of Namdi with the spirit connection. It's just like, oh, no, I'm gonna retract to my phone. And, and this isn't all of our membership body or necessarily even most, but I'm just giving scenarios that I have witnessed and I, I've been advocating and, and still am and good things are happening because I'm creating exercises for us when we come together to not do this or only feel safe, only talking to those few people that we know and we're having deep discussions about things like right now and we're able to, um, activities are cool, but I find that like, or what I, what I felt and observed is that we were doing a lot of socializing around the thing. And the, the reason why the, the thing or the activity, the event is fun is not because of the venue or what we're doing is because of who I'm doing it with. And so what I've been really advocating for in my own way is putting the focus on, yeah, we're going to go do this thing. We're going to go to this venue. We're going to do this activity. But the reason that I want to be there is because you're going to be there and this person is going to be there and we're going to do it together. Not, oh yeah, I haven't bowled in a while. <laughs> that's pointless. And I think that's the difference between, you know, community and this other thing of, 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 I guess even a, the falsification of community because community starts with self and then immediate family and then your neighborhood, you know, your extended family, your neighborhood and, and so forth and so forth. And it, it continues to, you know, reverberate outward. But if you're just looking for like echo chambers, which is what's happening with some people, that's, that's to me like the falsification of community. That's not mm. true community. Mm. So what you made, you made a, a few, everybody made some uh, extremely valid points. But one, one thing that uh, you mentioned before, and it had to deal with uh, communion with self. You shut down, not not necessarily shut down in general, but you you I should say you cut off. You cut off, or you put a little bit of a little bit of time aside for yourself in order to commune with yourself, and and then that gave you more. Uh, my condolences for your family, by the way. Um, but that gave you more time for retrospection, uh, and allowed you to go back out to communicate and develop community with the rest of the individuals out there. And you also pointed out another valid thing, being able to go out and break people away from uh, that phone hijacking their attention, being able to um, allow that connection to happen. One of the things that I've, I've discovered and I, I go to the gym uh, uh, pretty frequently. One thing that I've recognized just going there in general is that is a community. 
because it is a, a place where people are going to develop themselves, right? But then at the same time, and here's what, here's the interesting thing about it. Most of the interaction that individuals will have will usually be with individuals that they go with or with people that they develop connections with at the gym, right? But then you will have those individuals and mo most of those individuals are usually the ones that you see go to the gym all the time. You know that they're they're almost experts in in that field of of physical endurance, right? So everyone got headphones on everyone and then the ones that don't have headphones are communicating with the people that they went there with or they're talking to the individuals that they know and they will ignore everyone else that is there the ability to have a connection or receive some type of help from an individual that you don't know if you don't have the knowledge or the expertise or even know what you're doing when you go there, you have to pay for it. Wild to me. So personal experience. I go, and actually it was a couple of days ago. I go and of course I know, you know, some people there myself and uh, I communicate with them, say, what's up, what, what you're working on, you know, blah, 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 bet. What, what are some, some exercises that you're doing? that may be able to help me, blah, blah, blah. And I had to go there and I do people watching as well. So while I'm in the middle of my exercise, one thing that I, that it, it's not even like a thing that I like to do. I just realized that because I'm part of this community, if I have even just the smallest bit of knowledge that may be able to help someone that doesn't have it, I'm going to put that information out there. So I see this gentleman, young cat, and uh, he's doing cable flies. Cable flies are cable flies are when you have two cables and it's on two opposite ends and they both have an individual amount of weight. So you're usually pulling. It's either going to be with a push or a pull exercise, but most of the time it's a pull. So I might go into uh, I might go into personal training, but that's that's another conversation. So I'm recognizing that he is doing the way that he's doing the exercise is not going to be beneficial for what he's trying to achieve. What he's doing is he's trying to pull the weight to activate the chest, mm -hmm. but he's doing it in a way where it's more strenuous on his back and his shoulders. Mm -hmm. So while I'm seeing, I'm doing my exercise and I see him, I had to go say something because no one else, there are individuals that know how to perform these exercises properly. You got the trainers, the, the people that work there at the gym and you have individuals that have been going to the gym for years and they're saying absolutely nothing to this kid. So in the middle, I'm doing my exercise. I see him doing him. I was like, put your chest out. And he looks in my direction. I'm like, big chest. And he's like, oh, okay. I'm like, so he finished what he does. I finished my set. I put my waist down. I go over to him. And I say, next time, keep your chest out, uh, scapula pinched and squeeze right and just take a couple i also told him to take a couple steps forward then perform that exercise like that if you need to drop the weight a little bit more so you know how to gain control or you know how to control the weight and that's what you do in that instance i saw this kid working on this young man working on trying to build himself even with the people that he came with his friends he had like three other individuals he was there with they were training on something else but no one showed him how to actually do it properly. So I'm sitting here and I'm watching him. And just that little bit of help that I gave him, I saw not only was there interaction with someone that he didn't know, so he developed a new connection, but he also learned how to do the exercise properly so he doesn't hurt himself. Mm -hmm. The goal is to have people there where you can develop. The, it's a community. If you're in a place where individuals have the skill, have the knowledge, have information that can benefit your life, this isn't just about the young people that are scared to actually communicate. It's about the people that actually have the knowledge and are in those communities. It is our responsibility to make sure that we are giving that information to those people, to those young gen to that younger generation. So now, not only is he gonna have a sense that, wow, I can come to this place, and I can actually look for advice. 
I can look for tutelage. I can look for help to help develop me. I don't have to be scared to communicate with individuals and individuals don't have to be scared to communicate with me. And it's going to help me develop myself. It is our responsibility, not just our responsibility as millennials teaching the younger generation, but we got to show the older generation that we're not scared to try and help individuals in our community. Because if no one's going to do it, it's our responsibility to do it. That's going to help them recognize not only the God in themselves, but identify the God in others and say, you know what? That's Chinook in there. That's Chinook in him. That's Chinook in her. That's Chinook in, in everyone. These individuals, there are individuals in my community that will help uplift me, help grow me and help develop me. And that's what we have to do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sorry. Yeah, 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 cool. All right. So that is that is very true. It's it's like I think to add on to it, this could kind of go into people judging certain people. And what I mean by that is like let's just say let's could consider normal group, and then there's someone who's not they, they don't have the same interests, they don't act the same, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And most people would tend to there could be a lack of community in a way because there'll be a sense of judgment and they never sit down and be like like let's just say we're communicating like someone's really close you know to themselves and they're not talking at all and some people just be like what, 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 he, what he or she doing what are they doing you know what i'm saying but then you gotta ask the why though why are they like that because when because a lot of people just want to communication is so powerful because literally it's it's crazy and like you could talk to someone for that day just like what you uh you was telling um the young guy at the gym I'm, in some way i'm sure that light in his day somehow like somehow in some way it's to the point where you you can't just i think people are so into themselves i don't know if that does with technology i feel like there's a lot of factors we can go into that all day but we have to because every, when everyone gets like talk to per se they just feel this sense of bonding and communion like you said akashi so i feel like like for example right i have a better example than the religious example because i didn't have an example at the time gaming right so i noticed that i go in a public lobby and you know of course we have mics and stuff everybody can do it but about a cool 85 maybe even 90 percent of the people just sit they just sit there and they just, you know, they playing and not talking. And then for me, sometimes I'm like, you know what? Let, let me chat real quick. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hello, can you hear me? Blah blah blah. Be silence. It's silent. And sometimes this happens for multiple games. I'm like, bro, can you talk? <laughs> anyway, then there was one person that is the exact same thing. Cause it's funny, because we were well, used to be friends, but you know, if I fell off. But anyway, so he he was saying, bro, I'm trying to find people to talk to too. Like we both had that instant connection like that, mm -hmm. and we instantly became well, not personal friends, but like online friends. It's like, I feel like everyone needs that. So then that creates the community and that's what will solve the problem. Man, I can tell you, I, when I, in my, my gaming days, I don't really play games anymore. I used to love those lobbies, man. You get crazy in there. But I mean, people that have never even seen their face, like I, I had a, a, uh, a connection with, you know, for, for years and years and years playing the same games. And it's, it, you know, it, that goes to show you, you don't even have to be in front of somebody to mm -hmm. see or to feel their energy, right? The energy that they give off. Because then, you know, you guys go get into personal experiences, this and that, and you find out there's relatedness. We're all humans. We all go through the same problems. We're not, the, we're not different, but we're not the same, you know? So uh, that, that uh, idea or, or example, rather, about, uh, you know, gaming and being in a public lobby and trying to find, you know, some spark in there is is uh is profound because that speaks that speaks a lot to what what how we humans, you know, really communicate with each other. And there's many different ways we can communicate, nonverbal and verbal. And verbal communication, you don't have to have you don't have to see somebody in order to speak to them, you know, verbally, uh, uh you know, uh in person, you know. So mm -hmm. just to light somebody's day up. My my uh thing I had uh it goes into uh into fitness as well, uh Namdi. Um 
basketball. Basketball is one of my, it's my favorite hobby. It's not one of, it's my it's the most favorite hobby. If I'm not doing anything else, I'm I'm out there shooting hoops by myself. I don't have to be running a game, nothing. I could just be out there by myself, working on my form, you know, uh, anything. And I, I taught myself, I was, I taught myself how to play basketball. One, because I didn't really care too much for it in terms of like that uh, passion for the game at a young age. I didn't have it. I just liked, you know, the idea of being able to go out that side and put a ball in the hoop. But as I grew, I saw the passion um, and uh, I just never really took, you know, grass for it during my high school years. So I'm 31 now. I don't know if, if it's the fact that I didn't take it in the um, in the past is why I'm still, you know, in love with the game. But, you know, that's neither here or there. What I'm trying to say is, though, um, if I'm in the gym and I see a 14, 15, 16 year old kid shooting, right, just anybody shooting around most of the time. If they. Uh, you could tell that you could tell when somebody's having difficulties with anything. And, you know, I, I, I told this one kid, I said, you know, his shot was very short. It was coming off the uh, the the lip of the uh, of the basket several times and he was barely putting his legs into a shot. I said, put some more legs into your shot. Right after he did that, he made like two, three in a row. And the, the, the smile on his face when I told him that. He just he just lit up because the shot wasn't like it was off to the left, off to the right. It just needed a little more power, and the power comes through your legs in basketball. And when I told him that, he was you know it just it just brightened his day. I could tell, you know. And so it, it's just those little things that you do for people that bring you know joy to my day and to what I like to do. Because when I was 14, 15, I didn't have nobody to tell me that. I had to figure that out on my own. So. You're absolutely. No, that's that's you recognizing the God and the potential of the, the God in that person, that person recognizing the God in you because of that energy that you presented to him. Uh, now, we, we got about 30 more seconds before we wrap this thing up. This is an absolutely amazing uh, 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 conversation. But I caught you. I want you to get the last word. You got 30 seconds. Go ahead and drop some knowledge real quick. Uh, 30 seconds. OK, so what came to me very brief is um, it, it really dawned upon me is we're talking about communication and, and I think of commune and I think of community and love is the highest frequency and the commune or community or communication is the medium. And when Emeka, when you were talking about playing the game, it, it had me going back to like just the first time when we were able to play Goldeneye and like the screen was split in four and like we're all in the, someone's living room together. They came to our my house or I went to theirs. And that's really what to me all of it is truly about is us communing, being the medium or community and having that frequency communicate to us love whether it's in a small way and in a nano speck of a way to the most grandiose form, that's what I feel like we're all searching for and trying to connect to. And there's higher frequencies of that and there are lower frequencies. But I think ultimately that's what you were looking for when you're like, you know, you trying to make the live live when you're gaming and people were just quiet. <laughs> you're like, what's wrong? <laughs> there's no love. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I felt awkward, you know, is, that, that that's what I see um, in the theme of this conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to thank every single one of you guys for joining us and, and giving your perspective on this conversation. Akimi bro, absolutely phenomenal. Akachi, thank you, Queen. Thank you for coming in and blessing us with that energy. Uh, buddy, you already know what it is, my guy. You did exactly what you needed to do. We we're going to go on a quick, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back in. We're going to have the the uh the ogs so to speak they're gonna come the in and bless us with some information original right. gods. Yeah, exactly the original gods you feel me so all right we're gonna take a quick break you guys have a good one
Wow. I tell you, man, <laughs> you guys were absolutely marvelous. Just fantastic. I mean, the last one was started off a little slow, uh, but when it started rolling, you know, uh, Magnus, well, what, what a job. Chukwemeka, Akachi, of course, your one and only Namdi. Doing your thing, great moderator. Yeah, um, you you guys really said it all. I think the difficulty that uh, the millennials have is having a strong foundation. You know, family-wise, uh, give you a sense of responsible responsibility to your community, to your race. You know, uh, expressing the economic political and social importance of uh, being true to your spiritual culture and the role that it plays in the upward mobility of a people. Uh, I mean, people that understand that maintain this cohesiveness and a level of protection of their culture, making sure that it's not watered down, making sure that it's handed from one generation to another generation, because we understand both politically and philosophically speaking, that your greatest weapon against imperialism is your spiritual culture. I mean, if you lose that, you've lost your mind. Stephen Biko once uh, said that uh, the greatest tool in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. It's not about the change, right? You endure physical pain and it will heal. You may have those scars, but it heals, provided they don't kill you. But if they get you over here, then the damage is generational. From one generation to another, you lose everything. You lose your name, you lose your God, you lose your culture, you don't exhibit any kind of pride in your primordial core, you start to act as if there's nothing to flaunt about who you are. Other cultures are doing it. You know, at least fortunately for them, they, they, they came from a position of power, you know, in dealing with indigenous people. You know, that's subjective too, right? Because, you know, you, Europe got its own indigenous people, you know. They all have that. But we usually use that term talking about people that were colonized people that were enslaved by the Europeans, you know, but being indigenous is not just an African thing or South American thing or Australian thing or being in Guinea, Burma or whatever, you know, there's indigenous, you know, people all over the world. So no particular nation has a monopoly over being uh, indigenous, but listening to you guys speak today with such clarity, uh, intelligence, you know, it gives me, hope and it makes me understand that you understand that to be in this position that you are or we are in today somebody had to make some kind of sacrifice and didn't care about what anybody thought the first people that didn't care about what they thought was the oppressor you know mandela was in jail for 30 years i mean he was facing the bullet you know martin luther king malcolm x's marcos garvey thomas sankara stephen Biko's, kwame nkrumah Patrice Lumumba, they all sacrifice something, right? So courage is key. Standing on your own truth is very important. And as long as you understand that it's going to take you standing on your truth and also having the courage to do it, I think the future is going to be all right for people of uh, African ancestry. You know, uh, Dibia Chiedozio can add a little bit more to what I'm saying, you know, because uh, when I look at him personally, he gives me a lot of joy and makes me feel like uh, that's just some great Africans out there. And he's one of them. Go ahead, uh, Dibia. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Oh Lord, he just cut off. <laughs> that is so no, cold. No, no. Anyway, until he gets back, you know. So I, I've been on the internet. I don't know if any of you have been to my profile. There's a fight going on there on Facebook. But I'm giving I'm giving it to him. Mm. I don't care where the chips fall. It's a conversation that needs to be had, and it must be had. 
It is what it is. You know, I don't buck from any fight. I'm not abusive either. You know, I don't say, oh, you are this or you are that or whatever. I killed him with kindness. Okay, there he goes. He's back again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just uh, mistakenly pressed the, uh, the wrong button. Oh, yeah, right. I, I enjoyed every every bit of the discussion. And uh, I think uh, I am glad that we have uh, the youngsters coming up. And uh, I do hope that our children and uh, your children, when you start having one, we train them along this path. Because I will tell you, um, the world has been deliberately made to, to seem as if it is a market. And uh, us black people think that all that we have to do in this part of the world now is to get rich anyhow and buy. Well, we're just to, I, don't, I wouldn't like to talk much. I would just like to say, if you look at nature, the, the whole of animals and trees will be, be classified to two, predators and prey. That's how it is. That's how nature made it. So as a human being, we will decide if we want to be praised or predators. Or we want to build a system that we will not pray on others, but no one should pray on us. And should anyone dare to pray on us, we will teach such people a lesson of their life that they will never forget. Such that when they come, when their children rise to say, we want to pray on such people, they say, don't dare it, don't, don't. Those people are not easy mates to chew. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if we know this, it is high time we started to build ourselves on the principles of resilience and reliability. That's what in traditional a vocabulary you call endurance, perseverance, steadfastness. And so we we'll decide whether we want to follow those paths of virtue or we want to quickly just live our lives, enjoy our lives, ride the best of the cars, live in the most bogus of the uh, houses and just frizzle out, frizzle out like a snake that crawl over a rock. So when a snake crawls over a rock, you don't see any footprint. But when it crawls on the sand, then you can see the skills of the snake on the sand. So it's left for us whether as black people, we would want to build our worldview, replenish it, revibrate it, make it to become, to resurrect, and give it much of reinvigorate it, sustain it, build it to be of what standard. That's the only thing that is left for us. We cannot, and I repeat, we cannot in any way build on other people's civilization because every river has its own track and no river leaves its track to hop on the track of another. They may link and get interlinked. And so bigger rivers will swallow smaller rivers. Rivers will swallow streams. Bigger rivers will swallow uh, 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 smaller rivers. And rivers eventually flow into seas or oceans. That's the way it's arranged. So it is left for us whether we want to Little build ourselves, build our culture, build our worldview, live in it, live by it, sustain it, develop it in all mannerisms and walks of life. That will make us strong. So I'll just summarize this way. We'll decide whether we want to follow the path of Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, or that of Martin Luther King, who had a dream that a day will come when the children of the former slave owners and the children of the former slaves will dine and wine at the same table. And I ask, when I first read these 20 years ago, the question I asked myself, supposing this dinner is on a ship and then there's a storm and the storm will swallow the ship and the only way the storm will be stopped is that some human sacrifices are to be thrown overboard. 
whose children will be thrown of the board? Will the children, will the former slave owners allow their own children to be thrown overboard? Never. A slave will remain a slave. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to do is to reform the agenda of Marcus Gavi, the agenda of Malcolm X. We may not be violent about it, but we may be persevering about it and build, like Marcus Gavi said, build our own ship, just like Malcolm X, build our own ship, make sure it does not sink, and make sure we do not offer ourselves as sacrifices. That's my take in it. Thank you. Beautiful. Just one more thing. Uh, okay, DB, uh, Dr. Owa uh, says uh, to excuse her absence because she's having some technical challenges. You know, so I just wanted to kind of bring that okay. up there so nobody will think that he she just decided to back off and say, to hell with y'all. <laughs> That's not the situation. But um, uh, Divya Chiedozia just uh, summarized the, you know, this conversation beautifully and also uh, more or less uh, pointed to what direction that uh, we should be headed, you know, in terms of how we talk about these things. But anyway, over to you, uh, Nandi. One one thing real quick. Um, yeah. I remember I was trying to uh, come up with uh, the uh, philosophical, um, the right philosophical uh, path that I was trying to speak on, and I just couldn't get it right. And I went to the towers, and I just it just came to me. It was actually uh, uh, Frederick Nietzsche is the one that said that less is more. So just wanted to, just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for that clarification. Thank you for, uh, man, this was a fantastic conversation. I will say this was, this was great. Um, absolutely. Number one, I will give everybody, everybody pretty much, uh, a few seconds for, uh, for closing remarks. Me, I think I'll, hand it off to whoever actually want to go. We got two minutes. So just 30 seconds each, whoever wants to run with it. Uh, let's give it to Akachi. Go ahead. Oh, I was pointing at Emeka. Go ahead. Okay, Emeka, go ahead. All right. Uh, now, I just wanted to say that for everyone who is watching, right, and it's funny because he didn't even reach the sixth point, which was more unethical dilemmas. But everyone should follow their gut. Don't be afraid. Be true to yourself and you'll find salvation. All right. Akachi, you want to say? Oh, okay. Um, the moral ethical dilemma I would say is we need to know ourselves. And uh, touche to what both Dibio Chojo Udi said and Dibio Chiodosier said, um, because ultimately, you know, you didn't choose what well, you did, you know give or take how you see it ancestrally, but you chose to be incarnated as an Igbo or incarnated as, as who you are as an African person. And that connection, that frequency that I was talking about, which is love, the highest frequency, that communion, that communication that starts from within and with our people. And I think when we're whole, everything else will become whole when we, when we move from that point, from that center and stay focused on it. Absolutely. Uh, buddy, you have anything you want to add? Um, this is a great show. I, I, this is uh, definitely, definitely a, a, a need to. Um, just, uh, just want to thank you all for participating. That's it. And thank Absolutely. you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once again, I want to thank every single person that was on this panel today. I want to thank uh, both the Debuas and the Otrajas for coming back on. Thank you very much. You guys.